finishes being a plumber. Uh, make the man a cup of coffee, will you, Dad? How about some cold juice, huh? Some juice. Juice. Cold juice. Cold juice you could have. Hey, what's going on in here? You guys getting ready for a garage sale? What? A garage sale. No, no. Mike started to paint the bedroom last night, and so naturally this morning the plumbing went out. That makes sense, doesn't it? What do you say? How about a date tonight? I have a class at the university. Well, uh, that can't last all night. What about after class? Well, that won't be till 9.30. Well, I've been known to uh, stay up that late for a good cause, seeing that I've never met a girl from the Bahamas. The Bahamas, Jamaica. That's what I said, seeing as I've never met a girl from Jamaica, Kingston. Ocheria. That's exactly what I said, seeing that I've never met a girl from Ocheria, so in Jamaica. <laughs> okay. I'll meet you outside the design building at the university at 9.30. Okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Six months yesterday she was killed. An anniversary. Thought about her all day and dreamed about her last night. Oh, I sure love that woman. I miss her. I had a thought about four o'clock last night. If I hadn't been a cop, if I hadn't talked her into identifying those two men who killed Stomper, She might still be alive. Makes you wonder, don't it? No. Not if it makes you question your life. You're a cop. You did your job. And you shouldn't feel guilty. It just crossed my mind. Right, it crosses my four or five times a week when it gets to you, you know? That's why we're paid so highly. Hey, look, you know. Mm. She wanted you to have it. She gave it to you. Maybe it's time you took it back now. Not yet. It's too, too close. night of one of the marvels went down exactly as our undercover thought it would? The word is there will be a rumble of sufficient magnitude to turn one neighborhood into a war zone. 
The murder last night of Raul Guterres, who was gunned down by a shotgun blast from a speeding car, is an open challenge to a rumble. We do not know who threw down that challenge, but you can bet your bottom dollar that someone will pick it up. All right, I'm going to pull three cars off the street, and I want each pair of occupants to walk a single beat, specifically the area that is involved here, and I want Webster and Owens to make up one of those pairs, so I'll need four other volunteers to make up the rest. Please. Thank you. All right. Keep your eyes open out there. That's it. Check your pin maps. Hit the street this minute. Yes. I'll come out and get a chance to volunteer. Would you like to? Or maybe. I need men out there who can read that street the way a shark smells blood, Webster, and you're the best man I have in the precinct. Now, you know, the last time you and I went around this pole, you had a different partner. I believe his name was Willie Gillis. You talked your way out of the assignment then, and he talked his way into it. Come on. I want you to meet the undercover. Listen to his story. The two of you can put your heads together and try to figure out when and where this thing is going to take place and uh, who will be involved. Now, that was the hustle of the century. Wasn't it? What was it all about? Well, it has to do with a friend of ours, Terry's first partner, Willie Gillis. We came out of the academy together. Willie. It's only one Willie. Anyway, there was a situation a lot like what we got now, gang war. Riker wanted Terry to work on it. He turned it down, so Willie took it. He went down to talk to the gang, and they... they worked him over pretty bad. You see, it was Terry's job to make the contact. He knew that, and I knew that. Mind? No, no mind. It's quite a beating the kid took. I saw the same as you. Yeah, well, you saw more than I saw. The big difference is you could have done something about it. Well, I tried to talk the kid out of taking on the job. Oh, that's beautiful, man. That's really beautiful. Oh, come on, Mike. Get off my back. I don't need the weight. Yeah, well, Willie doesn't need the weight either. Riker wanted you for that job, not him. You bailed out and he got stuck with it. That's right. I'm a cop, not a social worker. Doesn't mean anything. Can't you see that? It's a fantasy. It's been going on for a long time. They throw a bone, then walk away, but nothing ever changes for the people down there. I know what it feels like, and I'm not ready to feed those lies to anyone because it hurts, man. It hurts. Okay, I can buy that. Good. But you're so scared that you might hurt somebody the same way you got hurt that you're not even willing to take the chance that maybe, just maybe, you might be able to help them. Well, that's scared, baby. That's scared. <laughs> Word just came over that the war is on.
This one's breathing. So is this one. Get an ambulance out here. Hey, Lee! Lee, slow down! It's me, turn! Is he dead? I don't know. Come on, let's get out of here. Come on. Come on! Hey, man, we can't leave him like this. The hell we can! Let's split! No, wait a minute. Maybe he's right. There's one thing gunning down on a church goers, man. It's another wasting a cop. If they can put us together in this hit and run, they'll tie it to us marbles when we buy that shooting for sure. He's right, man. We gotta dump him someplace else. Come on. Drop him, Lee. Lee, move! Move! <laughs> Okay. You mean you're trying to identify the man? That's right. It's not worth it. It's not worth the risk, okay? It's not an order. No, it's not an order. I don't have the right to order you to do anything. But I'm asking. Just watch around, that's all. Don't ask me to do anything that I might regret then, okay?
took off to the left after a couple of the churchgoers. Terry took off to the right chasing one of the marbles. That was the last time I saw Terry, Lieutenant. Now, that was five hours ago. Could you identify the marble that Webster was chasing? Did you get a good look at him? No, sir. Everything happened too fast. I didn't even get a look at the ones I was chasing. Lieutenant? Yeah. We combed the entire neighborhood, house to house. There's no sign of him. Nobody saw anything. Nobody knows anything. Look, it's obvious he's out there somewhere and needs our help. He might be hurt. Maybe bad. Oh, nonsense. What's the matter with you two? Grounds for concern, but don't put the man in his grave just yet. I think you're jumping the gun a little bit, don't you? Well, let's just slow down. Webster is known to be somewhat less than orthodox. Wouldn't you agree? Now, what I'm thinking of is a little gang war that went down about a year ago. You remember the stunt that Webster pulled? What stunt was that? Well, he was handed an invitation to a rumble. <laughs> I'm cruising all over looking for you. Blades are throwing a party. And we want you and your boys to come. When? Tomorrow night, one in the morning. Where? The old field house. You'll be there now, won't you? Oh, yeah. We'll be there. Everyone are suicide squads. You call it. Three-man squads, three to back them. You got it. Don't chicken out on me, Chooch. Split, red man. You don't walk this turf. Yeah, well, that's just temporary. <laughs> like after tomorrow night. <laughs> Stop us. Say it, Terry. How much of you is cop? And how much some dude that's maybe looking to help us out? Making you fight a rumble is going to help you out. Busting us or stopping it ain't going to do much good either. Well, all I heard was that you were invited to a party. Now, that invitation should have been passed along to this department. But no, Webster had to do his own thing in his own way. If I remember correctly, everything turned out all right. Well, of course it did, Danko, but how do we know Webster isn't doing his thing again? Maybe he's putting this rumble on wraps right now. Perhaps he just doesn't have enough time to let us know what he's up to. Why can't it be like this instead of all the gloom that you're predicting? It could. Of course it could. And how come you look so worried? Well, worrying is not going to get us anywhere. That's what I'm trying to tell you. All right, let's add it up. We got two churchgoers in the hospital. One is in serious condition. They were both shot by a man wearing a marble jacket. We have a police officer missing who was last seen chasing someone who was wearing a marble jacket. That, to me, is a very common denominator. So I want the marbles rounded up. I want every one of them brought in who is wearing the colors today or who has done so in the last two years. I want them brought in, I want them questioned, and I want answers. I want Webster.
some guy made this for you sitting on a beach somewhere. Ten minutes? I couldn't do it in ten years. So what? It's just that, uh... There's so much about you I don't know. More to know. More to learn about each other. More to love. That shotgun all torn up. At the bottom of three different garbage stumps. <laughs> Ain't no one can prove it was us who opened up on those church cores. Six down the side. Talk about position, eh? Man, we got position all over the place. Those church cores will move to the side when they see a marble walking down the street now. Man, we got it made, you dig it? What about Terry Webster? Who? The cop. That's his name. Like my brother Chuck and him was pretty tight. Is that who that cop was? Terry Webster? Well, that's a shame. Of all the pigs to run down, it had to be him. He wasn't that bad a guy. Figure that out. Look, man, maybe we ought to do something. Maybe we ought to go see. He might still be alive. Maybe we can help him. Maybe you better pray he's dead. Now, look. The both of you, because of the shooting of those churchgoers, we are going to be picked up along with every marble in this community. You dig it? Now, we were in that rumble, sure. That's cool. But we don't know anything about no shotgun. And we never saw Terry Webster out there. You understand? Yeah. Sure, Stutz. Anything you say, man. Okay. Fourteen down the corner. He's going to be all right. You better believe that.
Hi, I'm Chris. Christopher Owens. Terry Webster. I'm reporting in from the Academy. Mike Danko. Uh, how are you? Go on, man. Anyway, I miss you guys. Hey, I even miss Riker. You can tell him for me that he's nothing but a pussycat next to the man who calls Musty in Grand Hill, Ohio. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna love that. Hey, man. My tie. Sorry. Uh, Webster and Danko. 30 seconds, you're gonna be late for muster. Webster, I wanna talk to you after muster. Yes, sir. After muster, not ten minutes after, right after. Sorry, Lieutenant. I want you to meet your new partner. Uh, Lieutenant, we usually assign new partners uh, from the duty list. Why the formality? When a rookie comes out of the academy, he is assigned his new partner in this manner. It's tradition. Officer Christopher Paul Owens, I want you to meet Officer Terrence Beauregard Webster. Um, nothing personal, Owens. Uh, Lieutenant, I just came off of three weeks of very hard night duty, and you know how it is breaking in a new rookie, uh, the paperwork and the indoctrination. Why don't you give me a break, and Owens wouldn't mind, would you? No. Anyway, there are older, more experienced officers around here. You'd be better all the way around, sir. <laughs> Chris, how you doing? Okay. You okay? Yeah. Feeling chill, right? Yes. Have you seen this? No. Think it'll help? Like they say, it couldn't hurt. You look like you could use some rest. No, I'm okay. How about you? you all right? Yeah. Come on, I'll buy us some coffee. I want you to sit down, shut up, and listen. <laughs> One of your members opened up with a shotgun on two churchgoers yesterday, and I have news for you. You're lucky. They will both live. Oh. oh, make no mistake about it. We'll talk about this in greater detail later on. I intend to find out which one of you pulled that trigger, and I will nail that man to the wall. But first, I would like a little help from you. Yeah, well, I gave it the office. <laughs> <laughs> one more crack like that, and I'm gonna climb on your backs like a compact that goes after trash. Make no mistake about that. A police officer is missing. He was last seen chasing a man wearing a marble Jacket. Now, which one of you was that? This officer's name is Terry Webster. He was one of you at one time. If this were a few years ago, he could be any one of you sitting in here right now. He knew you. He understood you. And he worked for you. And damn it, the man is missing, and I want to know what happened to him. Uh, Lieutenant? We all heard about Webster. Matter of fact, some of us even know him. 
For our cop, I guess he's as good as they come. He was chasing me. I run the 110 seconds flat, Lieutenant. He never touched me. I went into an alley and I jumped over a wall. There was no way he could keep up with me, Lieutenant. Now, if I could help you, I would. Hey, all of us. Like I said, we all heard about Webster. We do what we could for him. Isn't that a fact, Lee? Lee's brother and Webster were pretty tight, Lieutenant. Tell him about it, Lee. Yeah, well, um, he saved my brother's life in a rumble with the blades about a year ago. My time, when I was running with the clubs, you dudes would have been laughed off the turf. What are you trying to do? I just wanted to see what two chicken outfits looked like going to war. You know, we knew what it felt like to grab hold of a guy with bare hands. Hmm? But it took guts. You had to get close enough to look at the man you were standing up to. Now look, Eric, look at truck there. Wouldn't you like to feel that ugly face of his give? <laughs> but what are you gonna feel with that chain you're holding? Might as well whip a telephone pole. Now come on, come on, you got the guts? You got the heart? And what about you, little brother? You think you could make it? Man to man? Nah. Forget it. I'm asking for more than you got to give. You know, I might be wrong. And I doubt it. You ain't got it. Webster is the kind of a cop that cares about guys like you. He's from the streets. telephone booth over there. Look, I'm going to call an ambulance. I'm going to tell them where you are. The same thing. Hey, look. I'm not going to be here when they come. Stutch and them will find out, man, that I helped you. 
But I'm not going to leave you here to die. Mm -hmm. I need an ambulance, quick. A man is injured in an abandoned car on the corner of Thurton Road. Harry! Looks like she's going into fit. Bring the car over here. Set up the paddles. I can't get a BP, Doctor. Okay. Everybody away from the table. Set it at 400. Come on, babe. Come on. Mom said you call. Yeah. Wally went over to the canal. Kind of looked around, you know. Yeah, couldn't find that cop. He was nowhere in sight, man. So? So, uh, we thought maybe you might know what happened to him. Me? How would I know? I saw you find that cop. And I saw you call the ambulance. Stutchy would have died. Well, that's what we wanted, man. A dead cop can't finger me for a hit and run. We should have killed him before when we had a chance. No, man. But there's no way I'm going to be taken in for killing a cop. Now, you get to that. But then he figures us for sure. Because you messed up, man. He's in the hospital now. Now, how are we going to get to him? How? No, we don't, man. His friend, the guy that maybe saved his life, is going to take it away from Officer Webster. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. No way, man. Not me. Hey, Lee. Listen to me, man. Look at me. 
we're marvels. You and me. All of us. We're the only real family we've got, man. We're closer than blood. And we've got to be in order to stay alive out there in those streets. And you're going to do this for me and for every other member who wears the colors, man. Because there ain't nobody in the world that means more to you. Now, you understand? Stutz. You got to understand about Terry Webster and my brother Chuck. Now, you listen to me. You kill Webster before he fingers me, or I'm going to kill you dead. Now, you get that. Now, how do we go, Lee? You call it. Touching Wally, man. They're waiting for me downstairs. Yeah. They said they'd kill me, Terry. They said they'd kill me if I didn't. If I didn't. Wally waiting in the lobby to kill him. Help him. 
Show it to your mama. That's what I'm gonna do, Lee. Come Terry over. He's also the one who opened up that shotgun on the church goers. What, man? We're marvels, man. We're brothers. You turn on a brother, you dirt. Man, we wore the same color, Stutch. But we ain't brothers. Man, there ain't even a family resemblance. Hey, there she is. Hi, Sandy. Hi, you two. You're just in time. Terry's yeah. about to be released. Ah, is Jill in there with him? Yeah. Hey, uh, I have a favor to ask you two. The head nurse says that every patient has to be released uh, from a wheelchair. Mm -mm. <clears throat> I think you can forget that. You'll never do it. I know. That's why I'm asking for your help. If I can talk him into it, and I can't promise that I can, let's have our dinner when you get off work tonight. Okay, it's a deal. Okay. <laughs> Jane, would you see if there's a wheelchair back there, please? Working hard? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, James. See you. Okay. Come in. Hey. <laughs> Your wheels are here. <laughs> there you go. It's all yours. No way. <laughs> oh, come on. <clears throat> for me, as a friend. It means dinner for me with Sandy tonight. Yeah. Okay. You're a good person. But you owe me. That I'm sure of. You owe me. Why? Did you forget this? No, I thought you might like to keep it. Well, I thought maybe you might want it now. Mm -hmm. Okay. 